Okay. Thank Hashem. We're able to learn every day. Especially in the morning. <laughs> it's the best. And then um um the schus of our learning. We have the base of Migdash immediately before Shlaima Fiqil Nasim Ben Sara. Aaron David Alevi Ben Menuchad Lester and um Avram Rafal Ben Sara, I think. Okay. We're starting on the bottom of Lamed, Lamed Amr Aleph, that's 30a. It says, Le yoichol basa v'le yishtayayin, in the Suda Mavsekas, the meal before the fast, that's Mavsek, that's the last meal before, before the fast, you're not supposed to eat meat or drink wine. So Tana was taught in a b'raisa, oichol basa muliach v'shay siyayin megitay, you're allowed to eat uh, dried meat, like salted meat, they call it the South African stuff that the uh, yeah, like beef jerky, like bil tank or something. It's not really meat, so at least for this. So it, you're allowed to eat that. And Tracy Ayan Migita, Ayan Migita is the wine that before it really ferments, either the juice or it's in the middle of the process. It's not, it's not, um, at that point, it's not good. It's, uh, it takes, it's, it's in middle, it's like ha half baked, you know. Basam Aliyah had Kama. How long salted is it considered that it's salted? Amar Abchinina Barkana Mishmi the Shmuel, Kolzman, it's two ways of reading this, but it means the same thing. Kolzman, Sheinik Shlamim. Shlamim, you're able to eat for two days and one night. That's a, a peace offering, that's a sacrifice. If it's salted for two days and one night, it's not a shlamim anymore, then it's too, it's salted enough. Already the salt has taken effect and it's already like changed the, the nature of the meat. And it won't rot as quickly. And it won't rot, but that's the, it's like a preserved meat, but it's not, we're not considering it meat for this context. Okay. It's chewy stuff. But yayin megita yad kama, how long yayin megita is this juice that it's, um, that it's not considered wine. It's called manchutasis as long as it's boiling, bubbling rather. Apparently in the fermentation process, it heats up. And um, that's when it's, uh, I know when it's mavush holding. Yeah, this is not mavush. <laughs> this is just in the process itself. I think the tasis, the boiling over here, I don't think it means like real boiling. It's not, it's boiling because the, the uh, carbon dioxide is leaving in the, in the oh. fermentation. There's the yeast. Did you say boiling? It's right. the language uses here in the corn is fermenting. Fermenting. So, yeah, they, it, when you make these things, they have, some, have sometimes like a water lock. You can see the air coming out and it goes through that, uh, you know, the water lock that bubbles through the, so no air gets in, only air gets out. So you see the bubbles going up. That. I don't know what was on top. Right. It says, the Tana was taught in the Brice, the Maybe they didn't even have to cover it because the snakes don't, go, don't get in it. Some things they cover just so the air doesn't get in. But um, there was a problem of, of snakes that would dr dr uh, drink from liquids and then it would be, um, be poison. Yeah. Today, maybe it's just like bacteria or something. So they, that's what we would say. So, but gila was a problem. You don't want to leave water open, the liquids, liquids open. We only have this relevant for Kiddush, I think. Yeah. You don't drink wine that was left. You don't make use wine for Kiddush that was left open. That's the halacha. Then so there's other the things, that, but it's not like the halacha that the mamish have to. Right. Is that a halacha of Sakana? Or... It's in Hilchas Sakana, I think it says that. Or no, I, I don't remember if it's in Hilchas. What was, where's that? Kufta sign? Or if it's in Hilchas Kiddush. I don't remember.
Yeah, wine that's left open. It's it's clearly in Hilfus Kiddush. Yeah. It's in Hilfus Kiddush. Because of Gilei. It says because. Yeah. Yeah. We're more careful. Yeah. Mr. Bruce, Machmer, even like a, a little bit. You, you know, the people like to open the wine, they let it, uh, what's it called, to, to breathe. Right. Yeah. I don't know what that source is. Okay. The Kamatsi Sase. How long does it boil? Says Gimel Yamim. Three days. Amrav Yudam Rav. Rabbi Yehuda says in the name of Rav. This was the custom of Rabbi Yehuda Rabbi Lai. Did Rav see Rabbi Yehuda Rabbi Lai? Highly doubtful. He saw Rabbi. Rabbi could have been like the student of Rabbi Yehuda Rabbi Lai. Would 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 he have seen Rabbi Yehuda? I don't know. But he says this was the custom of Rabbi Yehuda Rabbi Lai. Erev Tishabav mevian le pascha reva b'melach. They would bring him dry bread with salt. Yoishev and he would sit between the oven and the other oven <laughs> and the stove. Vaichal and he would eat. Veshaisel akitin shalmayim, and he would drink um, a jug of water. Vedaimek kamishem mesim with the lefan of, and he would make it appear as if the corpse was uh, was laying in front of him. Like he's in mourning, he 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 didn't view the Tisha B'av as as a as something that we just do because of the past. To him, it was like happening right now. It was Rabbi the Rabbi Lai was very poor, so we said before that you're supposed to do things different. You're supposed to change. If you used to this amount, then you do this. If you did it, so he actually put himself in an uncomfortable situation where he sits by the oven. You know, maybe that was that, what he would do different. It could be he always had bread. Or, you know, the Gemara tells us he didn't have what to eat. He would go to Rav, Rav Tarfin, I think, let him eat beets. Rav Tarfin had a field, and would let him pick beets from the field. So um, this is what he would do to show, to be uncomfortable. By the Siddham of Sekhis. Tanan Hasam. We learned over there in the Mishnah. Makam Shinagulasis Malacha Betespa of Eisen. If the place, the custom is to go to work on Tisha B'av, then you're allowed to go to work. But if the custom is not to go to work, they don't go to work. Whatever it is, the Talmud Chachamim don't go to work. What type of work would they do? I don't know. I don't think it means that they were bottled from learning, because that's a halacha already that we learned before. I think it means that uh, when it came to their work, even if they're even if the custom in that place was that people did go to work, but a Talmud Chacham wouldn't go to work. Rav Shem Ben Gamliel says that every person can make himself like a Talmud Chacham. We had before once that maybe you shouldn't, maybe it looks like you're, who do you think you are? Um, but here we're saying, no, that's just a stringency that, that you're allowed to. Tanya Nami Hachi was also taught in a Brisa. Anyone remember where we had that? Yasakala the Matmika Talmud Chacham. I think we had it here in Tainas, no? It's on the top of the page. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. By the Yechidim Misanim. Remember that? It says there was a certain fast that um, just the, uh, what's it called? Just the Yechidim, the distinguished people, would fast. Yeah. Yeah, the, those first fasts. So this is his pshat. Is this Rav This is pshat, that you're allowed to if it's something of tsar. Interesting. Fits together. Do you have a pencil? 
of Irving Smith. It yeah. says that you can make yourself like a Tom and Malcolm, or you should. Oh. Over here, it sounds like you should. Over there, it was... Also, it says... It, it, over there, it was more you can. The Feudum and Beige. So, where are we holding? Tanya Namihachi. So that he should be afflicted. A person should make himself like a Talmud Chacham and not go to work. Not going to work, by the way, is an affliction. <laughs> that itself is a lesson. Anyone that eats and drinks on Tisha Anyone that eats and drinks on Tisha B'Av. It's as if he ate on Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur is very serious. Right. Tisha B'av, well, it's in the prophets, but it's making it very strong. Rabbi Akiva says, anyone that does work on Tisha B'av doesn't see blessing from that. Rashi says, Mi Isa Malacha. Yeah, it doesn't actually mean turning on lights, Malacha. It means like, Field work, or you know, now Rashi sounds like in Raisim and Bracha Miyasim Malacha. It sounds like that I did one thing today, I fixed the fence outside, or something in Raisim and Bracha. That's uh, not gonna hold up, or something. Um, from Taisvis, it looks like he quotes the same thing, but it sounds this the, the, the nuance is Kalaymar Baisim Malacha Shragalasis Petisha Bav in Raisim Bracha Lailam. That type of work. It won't be successful in that type of work. That's what it looks like from Teisvis. Yeah. Someone said um, they don't work on uh, on Cholamayid because the, it says in Shulchan Aruch, in Raya Simen Bracha. You don't see... Um, like it says here, by Tisha B'av. But they happen to be that they worked on Shabbos. It doesn't say in Shulchan Aruch, in Raya Simen Bracha. It just says you're not allowed. <laughs> okay. Chacham Maimrim, kol Aysim Malacha B'Tes B'av, in Masabal al Yushalayim, in Raya B'Sim Chasa. Anyone that works on Tisha B'av, and he doesn't mourn Yushalayim, so he won't be around, but to rejoice, he won't, uh, he won't be able to rejoice. He won't see the rejoicing. Rejoice with your shalayim. Be joyous. All those that love love her will be gladdened. And all those that mourn will be gladdened. All those that had mourned over her will be gladdened. So Mikan Amru Kala Mesabala Yushalayim. Here they, we see that anyone that mourns over Yerushalayim will merit to see the rejoicing. Someone that doesn't mourn over Yerushalayim won't see the rejoicing. Yeah. It's also taught in Ebraisa that anyone that eats meat and drinks wine on Tisha B'Av now over here it says, Rashi says that it doesn't mean Tisha B'av. It means Suda Mafsekes. Because we said before that you shouldn't eat meat and drink wine into Suda Mafsekes. Which is the, the meal right before the Tisha B'av. Uh -huh. The last meal before. Allah Vakas of regarding him, the verse says, Vatihi Avainaisam Alatsmaisam. Their sin is on their bones. It means in their food that they're eating. Rabbi Yehuda Mechayev Bekpia Samita Yeah, the Mishnah said that you're supposed to turn over the bed. Like a mourner, it says someone that's in mourning, it says that they turned over the bed because they slept like on the frame or something in an uncomfortable way. Maybe they took it off the frame and put it on the floor. Maybe that's what it means. 
So, but the sages didn't agree. Tanya was taught in a brisa, they told the Rabbi Yehuda, according to you, a pregnant woman or a nursing woman. What do you want them to do? They should sleep on the floor. They can't sleep on the, they probably slept with the baby. The baby's not going to sleep on the floor. They can't sleep on the floor. They need a bed. Oh, Rita says, I was only talking about those that are able to. Okay, fine. Tanya Nami Hachi was also taught in a b'raisa. We have a b'raisa clearly that Rabbi Yehuda agrees to the sages for, by someone that's not able to sleep on the floor. Now here's the problem. And the Chachamim agreed to Rabbi Yehuda that someone that is able to sleep on the floor should sleep on the floor. Okay, so the Gemara says, so then what's the difference? Rabbi Yehuda says that if you're able to, you should, and you're, if you're not able to, you don't. And the Chum say, if you're not able to, you don't, and if you're able to, you should. So what's the difference? So it could be Nayu Sharmitis. Question is, what about beds that you're not actually using? Should those be turned over as well? Because you have to go around the house and turn over all the empty mattresses. So Rabbi Huda says yes. Macham <laughs> say no. Kedetanya. Start in a brisek. Shama likvei samita lemitas bulvadu kaifel kol mitas kulanu kaifel. He turns over all of them, not just his own. Amarava hilchas kedetanya didan blehayd lechacham and kaliker. The halach is like our Tana, not Rabbi Huda, that that says that the sages did not agree at all. That you don't have to turn over the bed. Taisra says, and Kala Isa Malacha says, Chayavadam Tsar Lamayat Bechweide Banaisav, that if you would use two pillows, you should only use one. But pregnant and nursing women don't have to do that. They don't have to pain themselves. They can eat the Sudam of Sekas by day. Oh, that must be in everyone. You have to, you have to, uh, yeah, you have to um, eat the suda by day, but nevertheless, if after you finish the meal and there's still more time, you're allowed to continue eating. Um, does it say that you need to have that in mind? Yeah, usually in other places it says that you have to have something in mind by the benching that you're going to still eat. You're not accepting the, the tightness. Taisus then says, in the next Taisus, he says that nowadays we're concerned about witchcraft. And so therefore, we don't turn over the bed even by a novel. Yeah, I was a little surprised about that. Uh, nowadays we're concerned about witchcraft. <laughs> well, he was in uh, France in the Middle Ages. There was all types of things. We were, we even had the witchcraft in uh, it was in yeah, Salem. So Salem. Salem. <laughs> that wasn't just uh, specific to women, right? <laughs> right. Okay. Amar Reb Shimon ben Gamliel lai haya yam tevim liyisrael kachemisha asar bavachiyem ekipur. And the Mishnah says. Rishim Megam Leal says we didn't have any holidays that were comparable to the 15th of Av and Yom Kippur. It's the best holidays. That's in the Mishnah. Rishim Megam Leal. What would happen? It says, the Mishnah says that they would go out and dance. White, wearing white clothes, borrowed white garments. And they would dance in the in the vineyards. Okay, let's see. Bishlaim Yem Kippurim. We understand why Yom Kippur is such a big holiday. Bishlaim Dispei Slicha Mechila. Everyone's forgiven. That's a big deal. Yom Shenitn by Luchas Achreinus. It's the day that the second Luchas were were given. Rashi works it out that from Yidzai and Tamas, from Shiva Sabatamas until Yom Kippur is eighty days. Yeah, he works it out. He says, you have 12 days from Thomas, and then you have 30 days of Av. Then you have 29 days of Elo. That's 71. And then you have nine days of Tishrei. That works out to 80. 
and then Yom Kippur. So Moshe Rabbeinu comes down after being on the mountain once to pray and once for, for the second Luchas. So to pray for forgiveness. And then for the second Luchas, on Yom Kippur he comes down with the second Luchas. That means we're totally forgiven. But what happened on the 15th of Av? We're going to have over here, what is this? Five, six reasons. What's so special? Rabbi Yehuda says in the name of Shmuel, that was his teacher, his second teacher. The tribes were allowed to marry. Yeah, intermarriage between the tribes was forbidden in the first generation because of the, they had to keep the inheritance, the, the properties in Israel clearly defined. So after the first generation, then they were allowed to marry each other. So it would go back after the Jubilee year. And then would it go back? Um, no, it wasn't a sale that would go back. It was oh, just the confusion of the, of like whose territory it would be. So my drush, where did we get this from? This is what Hashem commanded the daughters of Tzlavchad, that that generation, they have to stick to their, to their tribes. It says, that it's possible for a daughter to inherit. If there's no sons, that would mean that the inheritance would get passed over to another tribe. So for the first generation, this concept of sticking to the tribe was only for that generation. Someone should write novels, you know, there's like novels about someone trying to marry someone the family doesn't approve and whatever. This could have been like uh, the tribes. Uh... Yeah, wasn't that um, from Dunn? Yeah, Dunn took in all the gear and something. No, there was... Um... Yeah, the one that cursed, the one that cursed Hashem. Yeah, but that was in the desert. Now we're talking about in the land of Israel. Right. Amr Rav Yosef, Amr Rav Nachman. Rav Yosef says in the name of Rav Nachman. Binyamin was able to come back and get married. Shenemar, v'ish Yisrael nishba b'mitzvah leimar. They had like this council. They got together after the battle. They fought. There was a Pilegash Begiva. Remember that story? That like one of that probably the worst story in Tanakh. Um, this um, um, concubine. She's she's left outside. They didn't invite her in. She gets raped. She dies. The husband. Um, uh, cuts her into 12 pieces and sends them to each of the tribes, says, look at what the tribe of Binyamin did to her. And um, they go to battle, they lose, and they go to battle again, they lose. And then um, finally they conquer, uh, they, they wipe out like everyone from Binyamin except for 600 men or something, 400, Shana, 600 men. Where is this in the It's, it's in the last, uh, last two chapters of Shaiftim. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then afterwards they say, okay, when no one's going to marry the, re the remnant of Binyamin. That's, gonna, that's it, you know. So. Yeah. Well. Yeah, I don't know. Yes, Ephraim and Asha. Lady. So anyway. Um, I'm sorry. No. No, it wasn't. Uh, it was before Shmuel. Oh, okay. Then, um, and then they uh, agreed that they could uh, that Binyamin, the remnant of Binyamin, could get could marry into the community. Midrash, where do you see this? It says Amarav Mimenu, Ish Mimenu, from us. and not from our sons. That means like the, the generation was passed and now the ones that weren't at that first council were allowed to marry in to Binyamin. And so when did that take place? That took place on Tuba where they made that announcement, I guess. 
Amar Rabba Bar Barachan, Amar Rabbi Yechanan. I have another source. Yoyim Shekalu Boy Mesi Midbar. It's when the the people in the desert stop dying. The Amar Mar, because it was taught in the Brisa, it's like Kalu Mesi Midbar Le Yedibar Moshe. Hashem didn't speak to Moshe. It has to be that he spoke because we have all the Yedibar Hashem's, but it means that um, uh, he didn't speak in a uh, in a specific type of way. spoke directly to Moshe only after they passed away. Rashi over here quotes, there was a brisa that from the 40 years that the Jewish people were in the desert, every year of Tisha B'Av, there was an announcement that says, go dig a grave. Everyone would dig a grave and they would go, go to sleep in it. Maybe they would pass away. And in the morning, the announcement would come out and says, separate those living from the dead. Whoever was alive would get out. If it wasn't, didn't, of course. So um, that happened for the 40 years. It says 15,000 died every year. 15 times 40 would be 600,000. So. Um, and that's how they passed away. Now, the last year, they lay down in the in the grave, Tish above, and um, no one died. They all got up. What's going on? They must have mis miscalculated. So they laid down again in the grave. And they did that until the middle of the month when they realized that we clearly did not miscalculate because now there's a full moon. So they realized that the decree is over. Now the commentaries discuss were these people from the first generation and they survived? Or were these people not even, and they just didn't know, were these the children of the first generation? Like what exactly happened? Anyway, okay. Um, well, if they merited to come to Eretz Yisrael, but they were the second generation. Right. Yeah, so then what was the big rejoicing? They weren't anyway supposed to die. So another commentary on this could say that the point wasn't that they stopped dying. That wasn't the big rejoicing. The rejoicing was that the Shechina, that Hashem was speaking to Moshe again. And it was only after they all stopped, they all died that, uh, that the Shechina spoke to Moshe. Depends how you want to read this Gemara. How you want to read it straight through. And then that's the big deal. Ula Amar, Yem Shebitel Heshea ben Ela. Yeah, it would sound like just reading this that he was a good king, but it turns out that he wasn't. Heshea ben Ela was apparently a wicked king. And besides, he was like all the king, most of the kings from the north that were not good. But he did one thing that was, and that, uh, that he allowed the people to go to Yerushalayim. What wasn't good is that he sort of gave them this choice. He said, if you want to worship idols, like freedom of religion, you could do whatever you want. If you want, you could worship idols. If you want, you could go to Shalayim. I don't care. So, um, yeah, the Pasuk says, Hashem, rak like Yisrael. He wasn't like all the other kings, but he was, he was bad. So he would have been a king of northern he was the, Yeah, he was actually the last of the kings because after, during his time, Shalmaneser came in and took the exile, the ten tribe. Okay. That was Ula. You can remember that because Ula was the traveler. <laughs> okay. Rav Masna Amar Yom Shenitnu Harugi Beisa Lekvura. Rav Masna says that what's too above, it's the day that the Harugi Beitar were allowed to be buried. Yeah, this was a, uh, during the Bar Kochva revolt, which was against Hadrian, I believe. So after they lost the battle, so Hadrian didn't allow them to bury the dead either. Bummer of Masna, of Masna says, that day that they allowed the Haruge Betar, those that were killed in, in the battle of Betar, to, they were allowed to be buried. They instituted the blessing and benching, the fourth blessing. Right, uh, who The good is that the bodies that were there did not rot or smell. 
Vamitiv shenit nekvura. Hashem is good and does good. He does good is that he allowed uh, he allows um, he allowed them to be buried. Tesis mentions. Why do we say ateva metiv on a fine wine? You know, there's if you have a fine wine, you say a special bracha. If you meet the three conditions, I think there's three conditions to that. One is is that you were drinking an inferior quality before. Another one is that you were drinking with someone else. And another one is that there's still leftover wine from the inferior wine, and you're just opening up a new bottle because. So yeah, if you meet the conditions of a teva meta, then you would say it on wine. Why wine? Why not a, a nice new uh, loaf of bread? There was inferior quality before. It's not just you, you open up a wine and make kiddush. You don't say a teva meta. It had to be, you started off drinking um, a regular wine. No names. <laughs> yeah. Shabbos morning kiddush year, they typically later on with something putting out, oh, you got to taste this, this better. Yeah. So technically, those people, they should be making it. Yeah. Yeah. But the only reason why I wouldn't, the only reason why I wouldn't is because they have it all on display or in this drawer planning to come out. So I don't know if that's really a Hatefa Mate, the way they're setting it up. If someone would walk in with a new bottle, I think without question it would be, you know, and it, which is clearly better. How do you know if it's clearly better? The experts will know. They uh, tell you. They tell you. <laughs> the price. <laughs> Apparently, the price doesn't tell. It doesn't say at all. Okay. Yeah, you have to ask Ochana. So, um, why wine? Taisvus says, why wine? He says because the bodies were piled up. There's two versions in Taisvis, either as a fence around the vineyard or like a fence around the vineyard. Yeah, it also says somewhere else that the blood or something was fertilized the vineyard or something. Okay. Rabba ve Rabbi Yasef, the Amri Tarvayo, they both say, it's when they stop cutting the wood for the altar. Now, the sun has the sun needs to be very strong to dry the wood. That's the wood needs a very strong sun. Now, after Tuba'av, the heat of the summer is past and the sun isn't strong enough. And so they stop cutting the wood because it wouldn't dry out well. Rabbi Tanya Rabbelezer Hagadl Aimer was taught in a brisa that Rabbi Eliezer Hagadl, that's Rabbelezer ben Horkinus, he says, From the 15th of Av, the strength of the sun is, is weakened. And they wouldn't cut the wood anymore. Because it wouldn't dry out the wood. The wood needs to dry. Amar of Menasha. Menasha. They would call this Yem Taver Magal, the day of the, they broke the axe. Now, I think what it means is that people would use the handle of the axe for other things separate than the axe than the axe head. So they would take it apart and put it, put it back in the shed. <laughs> you know, uh, they fold things up and put it away. So that's Yayim Taver Magal. It's time to put away the, the axe. Mikan Ve'elach, from now and on, after Tubav, the Moisif Yosef, anyone that adds in Torah learning, so he increases. In, increases his life. The loy myself, if he doesn't increase in Torah learning, ye yasef. Taner Rabbi Yosef, my ye yasef. Rabbi Yosef says, what is ye yasef? I'm Rabbi Yosef, tik pre His mother should bury him. Now that means he dies young. Yeah, so it's talking about that when the nights get longer, then you should learn more Torah by night. Because the day, the work day ends earlier. Uh, no, so not the work day ends earlier. Um, the nights get the nights get longer. Not the nights get longer. The opposite. The night it's gets long. shorter. The day gets longer. The day gets longer. So when he gets home, he still has time to learn. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
why didn't they just work more? How did it work in the olden days? In the um, <laughs> when the day got longer, your work day got longer, right? In the summer, you worked much more, more hours. Yeah. So for some reason, the Gemara is uh, uh, assuming that you're going to get home and it's going to still be light out, and so you'll be able to learn. So now it says Shabahem benaisi Yerushalayim chulu that the daughters of Yerushalayim would borrow clothing. And they would dance in the vineyards. bas mi bas A princess would borrow from the daughter of a kain gadol. Bas gadol mi bas They would borrow from someone of lesser, um, um, distinct, less distinguished. Mi bas mi bas is the uh, like deputy kain gadol would would um, would borrow from the kain mishuach Mohammed. That was the one that went out to battle that made the announcements there. The daughter of this uh, Kain Gadol would go to bar- borrow clothing from a, Kain Hedir, a daughter of a Kain Hedir. And the daughter of an Israelite would just borrow from, uh, from each other. This was in order that they didn't embarrass people that didn't have, that needed to borrow. So everyone borrows. It's all borrowed. That way no one was embarrassed. All the vessels would need, would require immersion. Even if they were folded, you know, straight out of the box, straight from there, uh, the, straight from the cleaners, um, it still needed tefillah. Yeah, it says some places that um, if the clothing was wet, then they wouldn't be so proud of their own clothing anyway, so they would borrow the, there was a reason to borrow. When they borrow, they have to make that wet also. So it was that's not the... So what's the point of the tefillah? That it could be that there was a woman that, that her clothing was tame. And so we tabled all, all the clothing. Everything was equal now. The daughters of Israel would go out and they would dance in the vineyards. Why the vineyards? You know, is that like an uh, open area to dance? No, nah, there's a lot of... Wine oh, this because there's wine. That's what I, I uh-huh. That's on Tuba, no? Yeah. But it was because there's wine. What? It's, uh, it makes for a good party. Yeah. Oh. Seriously? I don't know. That's what uh, Jonathan says. <laughs> was this like a, like just half care? Like, like, I mean, it was like just do whatever. Or... Why? I'm asking why the vineyards. I don't know. Could have been in the middle of the streets. May, oh, you know what? Maybe it was easier to see. The vineyards in Israel are, are on these hills. Maybe it was easier to, to look at the women to see who they wanted to choose. Yeah. Oh, you, you're taking that. That's the shot. Just the wine. Okay. Well, them in the back. That's where the money is. Okay. Tana, Mishen, Anyone that wasn't married would go there. It was a, um, a singles event. Speed dating. Uh, let's leave this last piece of Gemara. You'll, um, uh, you'll, you'll, you'll teach this Gemara tonight. All right? Great. Uh-huh.